What's up guys, it's Trevor with Embers Living. Today we are talking about, we're gonna break down the differences between a gas grill, a pellet smoker, and a charcoal grill. I'm gonna tell you what I like about each one of them, what I don't like about each one of them, but most importantly, I'm gonna show you some of my favorite things to actually cook on them. We're gonna be actually cooking on these guys. Let's go. All right, first things first, if you're in the Denver, Colorado area, come to our showroom in Westminster. You can see all these products, get hands on for yourself. We'd love you to have you come down to our showroom. Also, if you're new to our channel, make sure to subscribe, smash the like buttons, follow us on TikTok, uh, do all the things, helps us out a ton on our channel. All right, so a lot of people are sort of debating, should I do a pellet smoker? Should I do a charcoal smoker? Should I do a gas grill? Uh, you know, my, my first answer is why not just one of each? Right? I mean, I sell barbecues, so that's the first thing I'm gonna tell you. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but there is a need sometimes for more than one uh, smoker, but or cooker, I should say. But specifically, if you could only have one, what would you do? Well, I'm gonna tell you the pros and cons of each one, some of the things they're useful for, and then we're gonna actually cook on these and kind of show you. And the answer is, it depends. It depends on your lifestyle, your schedule, what you like to cook, how many people you cook for, et cetera, et cetera. All right, so let's start with gas. Now, Weber is one of our most popular and probably one of the most popular gas grill brands on the market. Uh, the Weber Genesis is probably the most widely known gas grill out there. Uh, what is the advantage of gas? Well, gas is obviously, out of the three, the most convenient, the easiest to use, I would say, uh, easiest and fastest to start up, and I do think, depending on the gas grill, if you get a nice one with maybe an infrared burner, which I'll be talking infrared. And for me, uh, we'll get into some lifestyle reasons why you would use a gas grill uh, in a second. Uh, downside is, is they're obviously not fantastic for smoking to really infuse a lot of smoke flavor. There are things like charcoal trays, uh, wood chip uh, tubes, things like that, that, that actually will help infuse smoke flavor into what you're cooking. But in general, it's gonna be harder to regulate the temperature uh, trying to smoke on a gas grill than just using it particularly as a gas grill. Also gas grills, I would say, have the most variety out there. I mean, you can get everything from a $100 gas grill up to a $20,000 gas grill. I know, it's crazy, right? $20,000. If you wanna look at some of our luxury videos, we'll include a link, because they're stinking awesome. So I would say they come with the most bells and whistles on the high end side. So for any type of client or customer, uh, they're sort of all over the spectrum. So that's what's nice about them. Now, lifestyle reasons why you would use a gas grill. I personally uh, went without a gas grill for quite a while, a couple years, and I would never do that again. A gas grill is a staple at my house. One of the main reason is, is I run a company. And when I run a company, guess where I am a lot? Here, at work. Now for me, I do all the, because I own a barbecue shop, I better do all the barbecue and at home. So my wife personally doesn't use the barbecues that much. And if she was trying to start up the pellet smoker or trying to get her to start up the charcoal grill, uh, she didn't like doing that. So if I was kind of running late trying to get home and she needed to start up the grill ahead of me, so then when I got home I could start barbecuing, uh, she hated firing up the pellet smoker or the charcoal smoker, and honestly, it would take longer. So for me, the convenience of a gas grill Monday through Friday when I'm here at the office and I just gotta get home and put something on the grill. So for me, that was awesome that this thing could be piping hot 10, 15 minutes after I get home and I could do put on chicken thighs or if we're doing you know, street tacos or whatever. It's really, really easy to use this. And it's super simple, anyone can use it. Start, they can start it up. You don't have to have a lot of grilling experience to use the, uh, a gas grill. So especially for beginners, gas grills are great because it can sort of get your foot in the door. You can buy one at a reasonable price, a couple hundred bucks, see if you like it. Then eventually you can upgrade to some of the nicer gas grills that cook more evenly, things like that. As far as features with gas grills, uh, this particular grill doesn't have it, but um, you're gonna be talking about side burners, uh, rotisserie kits, this one does not have a rotisserie. Rotisseries are super fun. I think if you're into rotisserie, 
The gas grill is rotisserie the best, so if you like the rotisserie, I would definitely look at a gas grill. My favorite feature on a gas grill, let me find a grill over here that has one, is let me show you over here on this Lynx. And I personally would not buy a gas grill without this feature right here. And that's gonna be infrared heat. So infrared heat, gas grills either have an option where they're gonna have a built-in infrared burner into the gas uh, or into your main cooking area, or it could be an infrared burner on the side, or you could buy an infrared as an accessory. Infrared heat is gonna be between 1200 and 1800 degrees depending on the grill you use. Infrared heat is stinking awesome if you like to do any sort of searing, red meats, things like that. We actually did a blind taste test. I seared on a Kamado Joe charcoal, and then I seared on the Lynx, and then we fed it to everyone. They, I didn't tell them which one is which, and every single person chose the Lynx, if you can believe that. They all chose gas. You know why? Because it retained the juices more, and it was more tender. Even though the Kamado Joe had more smoke flavor, of course, uh, you could not beat the way the steak tastes on infrared heat. And if you want to watch that video, we'll include a link down below. But the point is, is if you're doing any sort of steaks, which I cook a ton of steaks, you gotta have infrared heat. I think it's the only thing that's gonna give you that true restaurant quality type cooking. So there's my spiel on gas. If you're gonna go gas, definitely wanna do something with infrared. All right, should we talk pellet now? Should we move on to pellet? Oh, by the way, you probably are guessing what I'm gonna cook on the gas grill. I'm gonna cook what I think highlights each particular cooker the best. So we're gonna be frying up, not frying, nope. We're gonna be grilling up some steaks on the gas grill. All right, pellet smokers. What are the uh, positives to a pellet smoker? Well, this is Traeger, probably the most popular brand out there, of course. What are the advantages to a pellet smoker? Pellet smokers have two main advantages. One, I think, if, again, if you have a good one, I think they're gonna give you perfect temperature control. Oh, this one's been cooked on. We're gonna cook on this one. Now, what do I mean by perfect temperature control? Well, on your sort of electronic control board here, we're gonna set the temperature, and as long as your burn pot is nice and clean, it's gonna maintain temperature perfectly. We basically have an auger motor that's feeding the pellets, and depending on how hot or cold it is, it'll back it up or run it faster. Um, so again, if you're a novice, I would say this is the easiest to run, most foolproof to run because you don't have to worry about the temperature. You're literally pressing the temperature here and just setting it. So it's gonna, I think, cook the most like an oven with even heat, convection heat all the way around, and it's super easy to use. Here's the other advantage. Um, most of them have Wi-Fi. So I would say if you're gonna control a barbecue remotely, right now, um, until technology develops more, uh, on a pellet smoker, you're gonna have the most accessibility or most controllability remotely on your smartphone. So I, th I would say pellet smokers are the smartest. So like this guy, for example, on the Traeger app, if you're away from it, you can adjust the temperature, you can see if your ribs are cooking faster than you want to or whatever, and you're not home, uh, you can readjust the temperature. Now, speaking of not being home, this is the most foolproof if you want to smoke without really messing with it too much. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, if you're slow cooking like a, a pork butt or something, uh, pork butts, those, those take five, six hours. So, you know, you can set it in there and forget it. You can go golfing with your buddies. It's not gonna be the perfect pork butt because you should be spraying it every now and then, but you can get away with cooking a pork butt without even being there. So I use a pellet smoker here at work a lot uh, because if I'm gonna smoke something and I get busy at work, I don't have to worry about it in a pellet smoker because I can let it smoke all day at work while I'm busy working with clients or shooting YouTube videos or whatever the case may be and I don't have to worry about my temperature fluctuating or keeping an eye on it. Of course, ideally you wanna be with it so you can sort of manage your cook a little bit, but it requires the least amount of management. For example, my favorite thing to do on a pellet smoker is take like a chuck roast or something, slice them real thin, salt and pepper, and then fill the whole smoker with those layers of thin pieces of meat, and then turn it on at 225, let it smoke all day, and guess what you have at the end of the day? When it's time to go home from work. What do we got, Chris? Some 
jerky. We got beef jerky. And you don't need any maintenance on that because you want it to dry out anyways. So it's not like you're gonna be in there spraying it or anything. You literally have to do nothing. So when I'm cooking jerky or something, that's my favorite thing to cook on a pellet smoker. Um, and they're awesome. Cons, what are the things we don't like about a pellet smoker? Well, it's not that they're a lot of work, but they're definitely more maintenance than a gas grill because we do have to clean out our burn pots because those burn pots fill up with ash from time to time. Uh, all of your grills you wanna make sure are, you're keeping your grease out of there, but especially the pellet smoker, that's how a grease fire can start because you have direct flame um, in that burn pot. And then startup times, uh, again, it's not a huge deal, maybe 20, 30 minutes sometimes, depending on the temperature outside, but it's definitely not a, as quick as a startup as a gas grill, for sure. So startup time's a little longer than a gas grill. Also, the majority, now I say the majority, some of our higher end pellet smokers will get hotter. The majority of pellet smokers at max are gonna get 500 degrees. So they're really not great for um, searing, high heat temperatures. We have our Memphis and our Coyote, both of those get 700 degrees and you can sear with that, but you're still not, you know, the thousand degree category. I don't think you're getting that true sear that you get on a gas grill. So they cannot substitute for any type of searing in any way, in my opinion. So that's the disadvantage to them. We have a lot of customers that will do a one-two punch. You know, they get themselves a basic gas grill for searing, and then they'll get themselves a pellet smoker for uh, smoking. If you're just getting into smoking, pellet smoker is probably the way to go because it's harder to screw it up. You know, if you wanna start getting into some long cooks, things like that, that's a good way to go. All right, should we talk charcoal? All right, what's the benefit to charcoal smokers? Well, again, charcoal smokers are kind of all over the spectrum, but they're, they're a little more simple uh, than like gas or pellet because it's just basically a pot that you build fire in. It's a little more complicated than that. But essentially we have, uh, you know, your basic kettles, your metal kettles that Weber makes, Napoleon makes, those are famous. Those are a couple hundred bucks, you know, real easy, simple to use. And then on the higher end side, we're gonna have our ceramics, Kamado style. Now, I personally like looking, cooking on ceramic. That's, if I'm gonna go charcoal, I would do a ceramic cooker because the ceramic really retains heat, helps create that even convection heat like I was talking about with the Traeger. Uh, also, and again, uh, once you get it dialed in, it takes a more of a learning curve than pellet, but once we get our air control dialed in, you don't have to really mess with it too much unless you have some wind going on or something, and it will kind of hold temp all day. That ceramic is gonna really retain that heat. The ceramic's also great for cold climate, so if you're in a winter climate, you're not gonna have a problem heating or cooking with this. Now, charcoal's cool because we sort of get the best of both worlds. We're gonna get, of course, the smoke, smoky flavor because we're cooking with charcoal. And in my opinion, charcoal in general has a stronger flavor than, than the wood pellets. I personally like it better because I just, I like that. If I'm gonna smoke something, I really want that smoky flavor in it. So that's what's really cool about it. Um, but it does require more maintenance. So you have to learn sort of how to dial in your air control here and then your air control up here. And it just takes a little bit of a learning curve. It might get away from you. The problem with ceramic is once that you, you get it too hot, it's really hard to bring it back down. So that's kind of annoying. It definitely takes the most amount of tinkering because you gotta you know, get out your charcoal, you gotta start your charcoal, you gotta light it manually. So it's definitely more work. Um, and I'll get to if that's a pro or con in a second. But what's cool, is like with this guy, for example, and this is what I'm gonna show you today when we cook on it, is you can sort of do, do a cook two ways at the same time. So for example, with the Kamado Joe, what we're gonna do, I like cooking bigger pieces of meat on this, like a, a thicker steak, like a tomahawk, or a bone-in ribeye, tri-tip, pork loin, things like that, bigger pieces of meat where we wanna infuse the smoke flavor, but we still wanna take advantage of a potential sear. That's what we're gonna to do today. So we're gonna reverse sear on this, and I think this is one of the perfect ways to reverse sear, my favorite way to reverse sear. What I'm gonna do is we're gonna build a fire, and we're gonna build it just on the one side underneath this here, 
And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna let it slow cook here and then let these grates get hot above open flame down here. And then right after we smoke for about an hour and a half, then we're gonna sear over high heat. So that's really cool with charcoal is we get the added, those are the two biggest benefits in my opinion. We get the added flavor and we get uh, the ability to go low and slow or we can get hot enough to sear cooking over, over open flame. So it can sort of do more than a pellet smoker in my opinion. But like I said, the downside is just gonna be a little more work, a little more maintenance. Lifestyle. In my opinion, this is what I do. I have, I call my gas grill my Monday through Friday, and then I have a charcoal grill. That's my Saturday, Sunday grill. What do I mean by that? Monday through Friday when I'm limited on time or if I'm just doing quick chicken thighs, chicken, of course, brats and burgers, steaks, things like that, I like cooking on my gas grill. On the weekends, when I have more time to devote to it and I wanna do something low and slow, I do all my low and slow cooks on this. And personally, some people like to tinker with it. They like starting their fire. They like dialing in their air control perfectly. They like having that control. And to me, the more I do it, I actually like it a lot. I think it's a lot of fun. It is kind of fun getting up at, I shouldn't say it's fun. That's a little fun. Getting up at 4.30 in the morning, starting a fire when it's pitch black outside, prepping a brisket, getting your charcoal ready. It's just fun. It just reminds you of summertime. So that's sort of my one-two punch personally is gas grill and a Kamado. If you can't do two, that's where the pellet smoker I think comes in. I think the pellet smoker in my opinion is a jack of all trades, master of none. You know, you don't get the, the charcoal flavor, but it's pretty much bulletproof. It's foolproof and it does a ton. And I'm actually gonna show you how to bake on it today. So stay tuned for that. Also with charcoal, you can actually put real wood chunks in to enhance the amount of smoke flavor that you're gonna get. All right, enough talking. Should we start cooking? All right, it's time to cook on these bad boys. All right, let's, uh, let's get going and let's get cooking.